Hello, and welcome to episode seven of the Trial Line podcast. In this one, we cover all the round 16 action, and we also uh, get to a fan question on Twitter. But before we get into that, all that, I want to uh, address why I'm wearing a South Sydney jersey. Now, people that know me know I'm not a South Sydney fan. They're, they're probably my second team in the comp, but I thought I'd wear it because my good mate Daniel's a big Parramatta fan, and they got absolutely smashed by the Rabbitohs on Thursday night. It was a great night, glorious night. I still got my Cowboys jersey here, so don't fret. Still love the boys, but I thought I'd just get this one out. Special occasion, and that will lead us straight into our fan question on Twitter, which is from, from at, at Priesty. My question is for Denny. How far are the are para going to slide down the ladder? What needs to change to fix this current slump? Take it away. Alrighty, I really didn't want to um, talk about this game. It's woeful. Um, but yeah, I think Parra, there are a chance of losing their next four games. Um, they keep on playing the way that they did. Um, they've got Warriors, Penrith, Broncos and the Tigers, Tigers sorry, as their last four games. Um, yes, I, I can see them losing all four of those games. They can fall to at least sixth on the ladder. I did a little ladder prediction earlier. Yeah. Uh, if they lose all four, they could fall to sixth. Um, what they need to change, what they need to fix to change, to, to get them out of the slump, sorry. Um, stop trying to make a play out of every single, like every single time you get the ball. Stop trying to make, make the miracle play. Just complete your sets, build pressure, the points will come. Oh, I could see that. I could see that that hurt. I was really excited for today's episode because my, obviously my team's been struggling all year. But to see your team go for a little bit of a uh, form slump and you come down off that pedestal makes me feel very good. And it will lead us into our main point of the whole episode. Can Parramatta win the comp? I don't think so. No way. No way. Not unless we, uh, we change a couple of things. So what we, change what? Change what, what do you think? Well, first of all, there's been one player I've been looking at. And his name's Sean Lang. Oh no. Oh, oh. I, I wanted to I wanted to call him a name then, but I won't. <laughs> could he um, be banned? Could he be banned from the podcast? I think I think he could be banned if he keeps on playing the way he does. What he does is every time he gets the ball, he'll try and offload or push a pass. Yeah. Just take a bloody heat up, man. Well, change, I'm going to change his attitude. <laughs> well, I actually, I agree. I don't think Parra can win the comp. I think Dylan Brown was their only spark in the last few weeks. I think he's the only one that's been a little bit creative. And uh, he's now out. Like, is he out for the season? Is he gone? Um, I had a look. Um, the I think the... The bloody the injury could see him out for about six to eight weeks. Yeah, so that's that's a um, long time. I think I think that really hurts their chances. Um, and I don't know, they they'll need to show us something in the next couple of weeks. Otherwise, I'm putting a line straight through them. Um, a team that's firing, Melbourne. They uh, they had Cameron Smith return on Sunday. I wanted to ask you: Do you think he'll retire, or do you think he'll go around again with Melbourne, or maybe with another team? Oh, would Melbourne want him to continue on? Because I know they've got a couple of good um, hookers. hookers coming back. Yeah, I, I think they've left it in his hands. Um, he's meant to make a decision this week, but um, with Harry Grant, the risk of losing Harry Grant and Brendan Smith, you think they'd quietly be wanting him to uh, pack it in. But he's playing good footy, man. He's playing good footy. Uh, yeah, he definitely is. Um, but do you think Brendan Smith likes coming off and playing a, a running forward? No, I think he wants to play hooker. I think he sees himself as a full-time hooker. And I, I think I think the Bulldogs could use him. I think the Bulldogs have the money to get him there. And obviously the Tigers would love to keep Harry Grant. But what about what about Cameron Smith potentially going to a, a Titans or a Brisbane? What do you think about that? I don't see that happening. No. I think <laughs> he'll either stay at the Storm or he'll uh, call it a day. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with that. Anyway, let's get into this this fantastic game on Thursday night. Let's open with the Thursday night game. Rabbitohs, 38 of the best against the Eels, zero. 
one negative out of this whole game for the Rabbitohs, which was mostly positive, but Latrell is gone for the season. He's, he'll be out for about four months, which really hurts him. He was just starting to fire, but the Rabbitohs hitting their straps at the right time. Yeah, definitely. Um, all credit to all credit to the Rabbitohs. Oh, it kills me to say. It was hard to watch, but um, I think the loss has been coming for a while, like a big loss. Yeah, it was coming for a little bit. Parramatta just haven't been playing like a top four team for around about a month. And um, yeah, you got Dylan Brown. He's now injured, out for a little while. So yeah. All right. Well, that's yeah. the last. That's the last you have to talk about the Eels. But go the bunnies. All right. The uh, the first game on Friday was the uh, Titans Dragons. Poor Dragons. They just can't seem to beat the teams they're meant to beat. Titans. I told. I said last week. Good things happening in that club at the moment. I think. Um, they they scored a couple of late tries in this one to wrap it up fourteen ten. The Dragons just continue to be disappointing against the lower sides. Yeah, um, Dragons. Never liked them, but I mean they should be playing a lot better with the team that they have. Um, but the Titans, they're looking really good, yeah. looking better every week. Um, their fullback AJ Grimson, Gun. he is a machine. He has added so much to um, to their attack. Him and Ridiculous. Fogarty. Oh, Fogarty. Yeah, Jamal. Jamal. Jamal and Grimson. Yeah. They're bringing him out of Jamal. out of the depths. Good stuff. Uh, the uh, the main game on Friday was the Roosters and the Broncos. The Roosters uh, won this one 58-12. The Broncos, I've seen better defence down at Arimba, down at Sawyer Park in the under-11s. Seriously, the Broncos were woeful. Some of, their, some of the Roosters' tries were just hit-ups, just one off the ruck. They were, they were absolutely dreadful. Uh, the Roosters, on the other hand, they're getting players right back at the right end of the season. They're building... And they're just primed to um, go for that three peak. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're, they're looking likely. They're looking likely with the with the scores they're putting on some of the teams. Um, yeah, if the opening couple of tries for the Roosters, soft as soft as butter. As butter. Um, yeah, as butter. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know what's going on about the Broncos. What's going on with the Broncos? Yeah, man. Um, no idea. Just looked horrendous. Yeah. Soft as. Uh, the first game on Saturday was a huge upset, I thought. Well, Warriors Knights. Uh, some people did tip the Warriors, but um, I thought the Knights would be a lot better in this one. I um, I actually have it here. If the Warriors make the semifinals, I think it's the most impressive effort to make the se- to make the semis of any team in almost history. The amount of stuff they've had to go through this year, and then they've had to move their whole club out to Australia, and then their coach gets sacked. And then some players leave and then they get to get loan players in. They've impressed me to no end. And if they can just sneak in there and get that eight spot, wow, what an effort. Well, I, I did say last week, the, the Warriors, I thought they'd get the job done. I didn't think they'd get the job done as well as they did. 36 to six, Jesus. But um, yeah, they just erupted in that second half. How many points they score? Bloody 20, 28? Yeah. He scored 28 points in the second half. Close game. It was, what, 8-6 going into halftime. Who would have thought? Um, yeah. yeah, I was, I was going to say, the Knights, not looking good. They've lost um, four players to season-ending injuries in yeah. key positions. Um, do you think they can stay in the eight? Do you reckon they'll fall off? What do you reckon? Well, I, th- I think the Sharks are the only danger of dropping out. I think they're, the Knights will probably stay in there. But... um. The Warriors, I would not want to play them round, week, uh, round one of the semis, I tell you that. They, they are building. Another team that kind of bounced back uh, this week over the Cowboys, the Sharks won 28-12. to 12. Uh, The Cowboys quietly lose their ninth game in a row and they just, they just can't uh, defend back-to-back sets at all. They haven't been able to all year. They just one thing goes wrong and their whole game goes down the toilet. Um, the Sharks, again, not overly impressive. Ramian is hurt. Uh, I don't know the extent of that one yet, but um, they they still got their doubters out there, the Sharks. Um, yeah, well, the Cowboys did score first. They did look good early. Um, but as you said, as soon as something doesn't go their way, yeah. uh, Michael Morgan, 
went off injured. Um, they just faded, couldn't come back after that. Yeah, and that's been the story of their, their whole season. Um, a team that's now we go from nine straight losses to 11 straight wins, the Panthers. I wanted to talk a little bit about Panthers because, um, and put a little bit of respect on their name because I think every week we've kind of uh, glossed over them and just gone, oh, yeah, they're going for 10 straight, they're going for nine straight. To win 11 straight in the NRL is unbelievable. Like the, the thing that they've done this year, <clears throat> mate, they are an absolute force to be reckoned with. They deserve to be the number one team in the NRL right now. And they're a huge chance of winning the comp. And I, I, I'm sorry for any Panthers fans out there and I've just because I've just glossed over your team for weeks on end, but the Panthers are the real deal. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they had um, Appy and Kiki out. They were both out. Yeah. But it didn't seem to really make that much of a difference. Um, they were just too good. But, I mean, the score, it tells, it tells a different story about how the game actually went. The game was actually... Fairly close. Yeah. Um, Penrith just scored a couple of late tries to kind of um, take the score out to third. But I think that makes it more impressive because the Tigers were in the game and then Cleary upped the level. Cleary went to another level mm-hmm. and the, the rest of the Panthers followed him and then they were just too strong. They're a real side, man, and they're a real, real danger for this season. Uh, another team that's just a real side and have been for, oh, it feels like a decade. The Storm, 30, Manly, 6. The Storm, man, they, that left edge, they scored 24 of their 40, 30 points down that left edge, and they just looked electric. They, they could have scored another 40 points. Adokar, Olam, mate, Papenhausen, they're unbelievable. Yeah, I was going to say, they actually, the Storm didn't play as well as what they should have. Um, they could have scored 40, 50 more points. Yeah. Um, might have just been a bit of a rust from the players coming back. I think especially Cam Smith. There's a couple um uncharacteristic errors in um in this game, I thought. Yeah, but again, they just they just win, don't they? Like we're, we're talking, you're, you're saying they didn't play that well. Meanwhile, they put thirty points on and only let in six, which was a soft try up the middle early. Mate, right, that's still a fucking awesome game. Oh, that's that's our first little swear on, wow. the, on the podcast. That's it. Sorry you're about banned. that. I'm banned. You're banned. Okay. I might I might try and uh I might try and bleep that little bit out. But yeah, um. The Storm, 30, Manly, 6. That's the story of the Storm's last decade. Uh, On to the uh, grand finalists last year, the the Raiders. They beat the Bulldogs 34 to 20. Uh, The Raiders were down at halftime, but then got their act together and they scored 22 unanswered points in the second half to just keep in touch with that top four. Well, yeah. Um, The Doggies, they they looked good in the first half. They looked really good. Um, that last try from Kerrit Holland, unbelievable. Unbelievable what they did. What was it? A bomb, then a bloody long pass, and then I don't even know. I, I, I couldn't keep up with it. <laughs> it, was, it, was the, it was the bomb and then the long pass, then Karen wrapped around the back, grubber, off the legs, kicked again, scored. Yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. Um, I can see the doggies winning. At least a couple more games, maybe one or two, if they keep on keep on playing like that. That probably really forces good. that probably forces the wooden spoon into the Broncos or Cowboys uh, hands. That does. Broncos. I hope so. I hope yeah. so. Got to have some love for me, boys here. Go the Cowboys. All right. Well, that wraps up our episode seven. Be sure to tune in on Thursday for episode eight, where we uh, we preview round 17 which should be a great round and don't forget to check us out on twitter at uh at tryline yt we're posting all the time up there and we do we post up a little questions uh spot just before we go live so be sure to check that out and uh remember to enjoy your dinner guys